Welcome to Crimson Guitars. Welcome to episode 73 of Luthier's Question Time. This is the, 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 wow, well, there we go. Boom. I'm thinking to myself in the background, wow, you're doing this very well and professionally and all that jazz. And then I just stumble over my tongue and we're back to normal. Alrighty, so today is not the usual Sunday. Today is Mon it is Monday evening. It has been a bank holiday weekend. It has been Easter. And uh, uh, the, yeah, I've been wondering what to do about the scheduling of the Sunday evening live streams and the Monday uh, guitar building extravaganzas that are also live streamed. And quite frankly, uh, not only do I feel that I deserve some time with my family, whether they want to or not. Um, sorry, I thought that would be funny. It was just sad. Um, but so do you guys, you don't want to be stuck watching me build a guitar or bass or baritone or whatever, uh, when you should be, at least if you're in the UK, off, yeah, having fun. So uh, there we go. This is how it's going to go. When there is a bank holiday, uh, we're just going to push everything back. Uh, the normal live stream that's on a Sunday will be Monday evening and the normal Monday live stream will be the next day and it's all going to be fun and games. Now, we have got, we got Sweet Tea Guitars in the building. What's up, Sweet Tea? Uh, that man is supremely cool. You should check out his channel, amongst other things. Uh, he didn't quite pay me to say that, but uh, he did send some gifts that are going to be on a video going, uh, and we all knew it was uh, coming anyway. But um, yeah, he's very, very cool and there's... Uh, that video will be going live on the Extras channel at some point soon. Uh, Kevin Harvey, Robert R, Guitar Addicts Workshop, fantastic company name. Steven Costa, Paul Needs, Steve S Spikes Frugal Fixer Shop. Wow, who's Steve? There we go, Steven Costa, Spikes Frugal Fixer Shop. A bunch of you, Lisa, Lisa, how are you? SC Guitars, Creverai, both moderators in the house at the moment. And well, there we go, it is what it is. Lisa's just finished her portobello with brie. Yummy. I have just finished an hour of technical difficulties. Probably an hour and a half, actually. Uh, if I look a little bit dustier than I usually am on th these streams, I spent the bulk of the day with... Uh, um, uh, both boys first thing in the morning and then my, my youngest wanted a day out just with his daddy. So we went and did that and it was great fun. But... Uh, I've been putting off the sanding, the final sanding, and the gluing the neck in of the base that is being live streamed tomorrow. And uh, I'm like, ah, it's fine, it's an hour's work. You know, get the murker out, sand it down, glue the neck in, do the live stream. <sighs> the murker has decided that it hates me. The electricity in this workshop, I've blown the fuse now three times this evening, killing the recording, just killing everything down here, obviously, the internet, the Wi-Fi, the recording stuff, uh, turning all the cameras off, the, the unsyncing the Atom Mini, it's been horrific. And then while diagnosing the issue, which unfortunately was the sander, I managed to run past my clamp here and destroy one of my microphones. So, <laughs> yay. Uh, however, the base has had the neck glued in and uh, that's all good. Instead of a half hour chill out before this, I've, 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 I've had enough time to pour myself a glass of substandard Shiraz. And uh, yeah, here we are. All right, now the first super chat is in for the evening. That's Terry Love. Hey Terry, how are you? Uh, Terry says, hey, I've managed to resurrect my old Discord account. Uh, check out the Crimson Guitars Discord. Uh, it is a place where we find questions. And thank you for your support, Terry. I really do appreciate it. And I, re I remember that uh, a couple of weeks ago you were saying that you were having issues with uh, setting up Discord. So, uh, yes, I'm glad that you got that fixed. Um, Super chats are a way to both show your appreciation, which I do very much appreciate, but also guarantee that I absolutely will see and will answer your question. And if I don't, feel free to excoriate me in the comments and somebody will point me in the direction of the uh, of the chat that I missed. That's a good word. Um, it's less good when you when you personally acknowledge the fact that you just used a good word. Damn it. Okay. Now, 
question via from uh, Rocket Punk via the aforementioned Discord. It says, hi, Ben. First of all, happy Easter. Thank you. It really has been. Uh, I'll tell you about yesterday <laughs> in a bit. Um, I managed to convince my dad to make a guitar together as a father and son activity. I really will tell you about yesterday in a second. Uh, and it should be a community build for uh, the great guitar build of 22. The question is, should I make him do a good old Telecaster with maybe some weight relief, or would you recommend me to go nuts and do some crazy stuff? Um, okay. Now, I don't actually do this myself, and I really should, but it would be cool, and it would be wise, for all of us to limit the crazy stuff to one or maybe two bits of craziness per build. So by all means, do a fairly standard Telecaster. They are, they are fairly standard for a reason. They're relatively simple to make. There's not that much that can go wrong. The parts are easily available and readily available and relatively inexpensive, etc. All, all of that stuff, but Do one or two, maybe go insane with the inlays. Maybe uh, flood it with glow-in-the-dark powder or build in a smoke machine, I don't know. Uh, but keep the rest of the guitar relatively straightforward. And uh, that way you're pushing yourself on, on one or two fronts while not risking the entire thing. Um, and Iki Guitar says, Hey Ben, happy Easter. Would a wax polish be a good guitar finish? It... Um, not on its own, not on its own. Uh, if Essentially, I use wax polish on top of the guitar finishing oil, for example, uh, quite a lot. I use Renaissance wax, I've used hard waxes. I, uh, I play around with waxes quite a lot, actually. The Up to and including seeing what happens when you set them on fire, and hey, they burn a lot. So yeah, have a finish underneath that does, that does the bulk of the protection. The wax does not last forever. It is not particularly hard wearing or protective um, in general, depends on which you choose, of course. But uh, yeah, an oil, a shellac, a spray on varnish, you know, wax goes with pretty much all of these things. Um, so there we go. Uh, Fukumi says, so head tattoo plushies. I honestly ask Talitha every single time, and I'm gonna take a photo of that comment again, and there we go. Uh, yeah, I would love, uh, yeah, I would love to do that. And bobbleheads as well would be really cool. I seriously don't believe that there is enough of a market to make it financially viable, but that has never stopped me before. Uh, and a super chat from Rub Smoke and Sauce. Um, they say, I walked away from building as my head wasn't in the right place due to depression. Uh, ever experience that and advice, please. Uh, yes, I absolutely have. There was a period before I started the YouTube. Now, I never knew that I had ADHD. I absolutely had absolutely no clue. Um, and uh, I didn't realize that my body doesn't create the dopamine that is required. Yeah, the, the rest of you get. I, you know, it just doesn't work. I'm, I'm on a low until something absolutely insane happens, like, you know, building a YouTube video or doing a live stream to 105 concurrent viewers with only 33 likes. Uh, so I didn't know how I worked. I did not know how I functioned. And back then I was building uh, in a shed at the end of my garden without um, filming and without any interaction with anybody other than my wife. I didn't even have kids at that point. Uh, I, I remember going to the post office every two or three days just to talk to somebody different. And yes, I had a, a huge issue with depression back then, not that I knew that that was what it was. Um, now, the issue for me was that I wasn't getting that dopamine rush by doing anything other than finishing a guitar and that was once every five or six weeks if that and i spent a lot of time just sitting there reading fantasy novels when i was supposed to be in the workshop uh, my wife and tanya would go off to work and uh, i'd go down to the workshop and then sit there for three hours reading because that was a way to get 
a bit of a rush. Um, what I'm trying to say is that, first of all, uh, I found, in a roundabout way, I found a way to um, essentially self-medicate, and that was you guys. That was uh, through creating the videos and knowing that uh, I have got to do a live stream and I've got to talk to people and there's enough of you here that are getting benefit from that. That, that makes me feel really, really good. Um, hell, just the, the, the fact that a few of you are sitting through Super Chats makes me feel really, really good. And that is part of my self-medication. Now, I used to smoke cigarettes a hell of a lot, which was one of the things that helped with the ADHD and, and the depression, probably not so much. But um, it all comes together and it all helps. But the most important thing is that uh, we all need to understand and we all need to know that depression is just like a broken finger or a, uh, or a cancer or something like that. There are medications that are there to help you deal with them and help you deal with it. And it is a physical issue with the way that your body is. It's, this isn't sadness. This isn't, oh, my, my, my penultimate guinea pig died and you know, I've got one that's left alone and it was just two days after I was making jokes about shaving it to make um, <laughs> my own paintbrushes. You know, that's, that's sad and a little bit funny. Um, literally died two days after that conversation. I was most horrified with myself. Um, that's sadness. Depression is a physical issue in your brain that can be fixed with medicines that are specifically for that. And there is absolutely no goddamn reason why it should be treated different from anything else. If you have a broken leg, you get sent to the hospital and you get fixed. If you have depression, you need to go to the hospital or the doctor or whoever and get what you need to get better. Okay, so... Um, that, in my opinion, that is the absolute most important thing. Uh, it is an illness. It is a disease. It is not a choice. You do not choose to wake up and be depressed. Um, there's a lot of interference on the microphone. I'll see if I can sort that out. Um, okay, so the other thing is, uh, thank you to the person who's just sent me a WhatsApp. Uh, there are... I'm going to change this microphone. I'm just going to talk into the other one. There are a lot of people, uh, including the person who's just texted me, who also have the exact same issue. And it's there's a lot of us out there, and it's not something to be ashamed of or talk to people, talk to friends. Personally, I've never had to take medication because I have realized, because my main issue is ADHD, in reality. Uh, sorry, I'm just hunting for, well, let's just drop that base. No, that didn't work. Uh, well, let's have a look at this microphone. No, that just doesn't look good. Here we go. Budget lapel mics from, from Amazon. I've, to get very heavy, self-medicated by creating a situation in which I get constant positive feedback. And that is something that you can do. Um, I have heard from a lot of people that building guitars, getting in the workshop, even if it's just to tidy for half an hour, just getting in the workshop and working with a little bit of, uh, of wood or tools. Uh, how does that mic work? And that makes a difference to how you feel. But seriously, go and get help. Talk to people. Uh, get medicine if that is what is required. Um, and uh, know that our thoughts are with you. Okay, now, here we go. Uh, now, the first part of your statement there, Rub Smoke and Sauce, was I walked away from building as my head wasn't in the right place due to depression. And that is one of the beautiful things about guitar building, for me at the very least, is, yeah, some days, frets in particular, 
wind just kick my ass or sanding. I'm not in the mode to just kick loads of dust up in the air and wear masks and all that jazz. We're well familiar with this. Um, don't take that the wrong way. I wore a mask and wear a mask wherever required um, due to COVID, but uh, yeah, it doesn't stop it sucking. Um, isn't it annoying that I have to say that? There are a million different little jobs in guitar building and in new theory and in woodwork in general that can be done to give yourself a little lift. I am painfully aware that my chisels are not currently sharp and that's really actually <laughs> creating some angst with me right now. But I know that if I really need a quick lift, I can take a few chisels down, sharpen them, get them really sharp in about 20 minutes, and I would have achieved something that will make me feel better, will release a dopamine rush. I've got a set of four chisels here. These are gorgeous. That they've been sitting there for about six or eight weeks. I want to restore them. I think they're better steel than those ones. And it's going to make me feel really good when I finally get around to it. Um, find something that you can do relatively quickly and easily that is different to the thing that is currently kicking your ass and make it happen. 20 minutes of tidying up, 10 minutes of setting up your bandsaw, five minutes of sharpening a, a, a chisel or setting up a plane or restoring an old plane. Restoring old tools never fails to make me happy. Uh, this is what works for me. I hope it works for you too. Okay, now on to... <sighs> On to, on to Sweet Tea Guitars. Okay, uh, Sweet Tea came in. Todd says, uh, I was just saying thank you for the things you've done for me, not what you've yet to do. I don't expect anything in return, peace and love. I, I appreciate that. And uh, yes, I really do. Um, yeah. Uh, so Todd sent some, some wood and bits and pieces and a really cool pencil that's actually got me torn because I am such a huge fan of the, uh, the Pentel ones. And... Uh, it blows me away. It, well, it, it's part of my self-medication. Uh, now, speaking of the earlier question about a father and son build, I spent, uh, you guys know that I've been building an extension to the workshop here. I spent yesterday with Orson, who is my, he's 11, coming up on 12, he's, he's sort of nearly 12 years old now. And uh, we, I had, He'd helped me build a lot of the shed. We put the roof on yesterday, the um, the felt and all that, and did a little bit of woodwork and screwing in. We made the floor, and after all of that, he we he said, "Hey, let's 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 while we're doing it, let's just paint this damn thing." And he would not let me stop working till about half past seven last night. So it was like ten hours of non-stop building a workshop um, and followed by huge amounts of painting. The whole thing's uh, black, apart from the back, which we, I've got a lot of clearing to do. And um, I have had multiple employees with a worse work ethic than that. And it was literally the best Easter Sunday I've ever had in my entire life was just sitting there with my 11 year old chatting about school and people and stuff and problems and getting paint on each other. It was just an incredible day. I'm absolutely broken and absolutely knackered, but yeah, I, it's cool. It was, it was, it was absolutely awesome. And uh, yeah, he wouldn't let me stop. We did two coats of paint on a giant bloody shed. It was, it was great. Um, okay. Terry Love uh, has sent five pounds and said, "So this is your therapy. So this is your therapy session. If it works, it works. It really does. It really, 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 really does. Um, I feel great, and uh, I think that comes across on the videos. In fact, there was a period. Um, I don't want to spend the entire time talking about this because it is a bit of a, a, a bummer. But uh, there was a period three or four years ago." three or four, maybe five years ago, where it was absolutely obvious watching my videos that I was not in a good place. 
And uh, yeah, I was low level depressed the entire time. I'd got myself into a professional situation that really sucked, uh, albeit for the, for, for the right reasons. And I was not happy and it came across on the videos. And uh, now working a lot from home, working with m very cool people at, at headquarters, um, etc. Everything about my life for the most part is better. And you can see in the videos, not only in the videos themselves, but in how many we're putting out and how much I'm building. I've built more guitars this year than I think I did last year in, in its entirety. And we're only in April. So there we go. Um, Spikes Frugal Fixer Shop says, Ben, truss rod goes up uh, in the heel on my base. I'm installing from the back. My strip ends up in a transition with 24. Deal with it and make it work. Uh, deal with it and make it work. I think you should be okay. Um, yeah, make it tight, fill, and carry on. I've, other than once, about 16 years ago, I have never installed a truss rod from the back. But uh, it is what it is. JS Trucking and Guitars, how the devil are you? Um, feels like ages. Um, coming with a super chat, thank you very much. It says, good afternoon, Ben. I'll be starting my GGBO build tomorrow and the uh, GGBO build and videos starting tomorrow. Uh, how do we upload to the GGBO profiles? Okay, so you should have had an email invitation to the, the profile. If you haven't had that, uh, check your junk, but essentially it's, uh, it's an email from office at Great Guitar Build or Dot com, I think, and it'll be from either Talitha or Dale, my sister and mother, respectively, and uh, they will send you a link to the back end and to create your profile. Uh, if you have not had that yet, please drop them an email to office at greatguitarbuildoff.com and they'll get back to you. Uh, now, Talitha is actually here tomorrow doing, helping me with the live stream build, uh, and uh, yeah, it's... So there might be a slight delay, but uh, yeah, uh, it is there. Even shit wine is okay after certain days. Okay, Carl Holland is coming with a £10 super chat. Thank you very much, Carl. I seriously appreciate it. It says, hi, Ben. I've had a fun weekend painting. Painting some Scotty Young art using all the fantastic Crimson's water-based stains onto an old acoustic guitar. That is incredible. Um, I'm sorry, that, I, that makes me so happy because the first major project that I ever really did was an Ovation acoustic, one of those bowl back deep, I think it was a Matrix or something like that. Uh, I was 17 and uh, this guitar had major water damage. And I took a 10 inch hunting knife that I had. I lived in Africa at the time. Uh, I wasn't into hunting. I just liked knives like any boy, I think. Stripped off all of this horrific finish and I painted a, a, a scene on it. But uh, <laughs> I have no doubt yours is better than my uh, post pubescent fumblings. I came across wrong. Okay. Uh, JS Trucking says, I've already created the profile. I was just wondering how to upload to it. It's just like Facebook. Uh, you go to your profile and uh, click post and it gives you the option to post uh, video or images uh, or comment on somebody's thing. It's, uh, yeah, it should be very, very apparent on your profile. Um, Rub Smoke and Source says, Ben, thank you. You had me in tears. That's not the point, gosh darn it. Uh, you just get it. Uh, I'll be down for a course back into the year. When it works, it helps so much. Um, look, it's a, it's a pleasure and anything we can do to help, uh, let us know. As a community, seriously, makers in general and guitar builders specifically really seem to be, uh, this sounds like I'm saying that I'm an amazing individual, they seem to be really cool people. And, um, and, <laughs> Yeah, musicians and luthiers just seem to have it. And most of us are musicians, so maybe it's just that. 
Uh, anyhow, okay, and uh, yeah, Rub Swanker Source, I'm looking forward to seeing you on the course. Please make sure that you let me know who you are and that we've had this discussion because, well, by the time the back end of the year comes, I will have forgotten all because I suck. But uh, yeah, with a bit of a nudge, uh, I'm more than willing to, you know, talk about this sort of stuff uh, uh, in depth. I will take you out for a beer. If that's appropriate. Okay, George Davis says, I've just spent the last three hours trying to upload my first video from my iPhone to my uh, Mac iMovie with no luck. My brain hurts. Um, yeah. I have, I, I cannot help you. I'm, I'm Android all the way. Um, uh, who's it? Um, Adam Savage films almost exclusively on iPhone or, or has done throughout lockdown. It's, it's crazy. Okay, now, questions. Beth McKenna says, the situation with so many GP surgeries sucks. Paul needs an eye only lucky, I guess. Okay, that's a conversation that I haven't got the start of. Um, Mr. Waffles. Uh, this is a good one. Mr. Waffles says, uh, we should teach people to recognize their strengths and work with their struggles. Uh, and a little self-forgiveness goes a long way. I I was talking with uh, Orson the other day, yesterday, uh, about the fact that I'm literally learning new things about myself uh, on an almost daily basis and how I react and how I deal and who I am. And I'm, you know, 40. Uh, and uh, he's like, oh, I'm 11. <laughs> I've got a long way to go. But um, yeah, we, we're not taught, uh, boys in particular actually are not taught this or don't seem to, to, to broadly generalise. Um, we've got this whole macho bullshit going, I'm never wrong, etc. And it's difficult to open up and here I am opening up to 140 people. So anyway, come on then. Uh, mm. <laughs> okay, Toby D says, uh, uh, come in with a, uh, with a generous super chat. Thank you very much. Ben, happy Easter. This will no doubt split the group, so strap in. Cluson <laughs> uh, button tuners on a 330 casino build parallel to each other or to the curve of the headstock shape. Thoughts, please. <sighs> I used to... People are going to excoriate you in the comments. No, uh, that, <laughs> there's that word again. Um, I used to match the curve of the headstock as a matter of course. I used to use Spurzel tuners almost exclusively. Very lightweight, very, very cool in that you can take a Spurzel tuner and uh, take it apart to its uh, fundamental components flip it around and create a four and two headstock or uh, take a three, three by three set and turn it into a, a six and nine, etc. And you can still do that with them. They're, they're really cool. Um, but uh, yeah, I used to match the, uh, the tuners to the curve of the headstocks. And I had some fairly curvy headstocks. And over the years, I've come to the conclusion that I was just wrong and that they should be uh, essentially parallel to each other. Uh, that's what I would suggest, but I'm interested to see what people say in the uh, in the comments. Uh, Mark Jennings, Mark Jennings has come in with a super chat as well. Thank you very much, Mark, and says we seem to be so good because we make things for other people. Uh, it's always better to build something for someone else. I think. I, th I think that is a part of it. It is a part of it. He says desperately remembering all of the guitars that he's that he's kept or <laughs> built for himself. But uh, but yeah, we're, we're being creative. Uh, for, for me, for me, the product isn't necessarily even the guitars. For me, the product is actually the videos. But um, nowadays, but yeah, when I was building for customers, it's it's entirely external. You've got some person who's come in and they, they want you to build their dream guitar or bass. Uh, ben, can you do a 10-string touch guitar with a hollow neck and piezos and midi? Hell, I had a 10-string guitar with 
wow, I'd completely... I think we ended up with six of the strings being MIDI and piezo, or six of the strings being MIDI and everything... <laughs> insane. It was a long time ago now. Um, so, so, yeah, and you are thinking about that person. You're thinking about that customer and, and thinking about trying to make them happy. And, uh, yeah. Now, the one problem is when they're not happy, the, the crash is particularly bad. And I, yeah, I've had that a couple of times when it's just, wow. But, um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, Externalise. If you're feeling depressed, see what you can do to help somebody else. And, uh, and that does help. It really does. Um, you know, I wanted to get home this afternoon uh, <laughs> to glue up this base and do the sanding and stuff. Uh, and my nine-year-old, eight, seven-year-old, my seven-year-old, um, I don't have a nine-year-old, what am I talking about? Uh, uh, you know, he was playing in the play park at this place that we were at, uh, running around, you know, like a loon. And I said, come on, one more time around and, and we're going. And uh, the whole under-promise, over-deliver thing came to my mind. I said, actually, no. So he came running up and said, okay, we're going home now. Dad says, no, go, have fun. And uh, on that second time around, he made a little friend and he spent another 20 20 minutes or so with with this random little kid and had an absolute blast and it made his day you know is what it is okay so uh sweet tea's come in says i'm on vts right now oh vintage tool shop <laughs> i'm on vintage toolshop.com right now any suggestions on a standing number four i've got three number fours now but i want a good one i don't mind restoring it um Honestly, if you've already got three, you've probably got one that is absolutely good enough. Uh, not that I want to um, talk you out of buying something from us, but uh, you live in, uh, yeah, you live in the States where you've got, you can get them a lot more inexpensively. That being said, uh, that being said, if you would like, drop the tool shop an email, shop at, uh, VintageToolshop.com and say, Ben said he would pick out a number four for me and I will happily go through and look at all of the stock that's absolute, that's there, <laughs> tempt myself while I'm in there and, uh, and pick one out for you. And uh, Safi is the lady that runs the shop for me. She will then say, you know, Ben says this one and I'd, I'd be happy to do that for you. Um, so yeah, I drop them an email. ER Webster, how are you? Uh, Fantasy novels, eh? Hey? Um, if you could build a themed guitar based on one of them, which would it be? Uh, Wheel of Time series. Wheel of Time, Robert Jordan. I think there's like 18 books, 19 books now. That's insane. Um, I'm going to guess King Killer Chronicles. No. I, uh, I don't know. Um, actually, it's it's entirely... Okay, Wheel of Time, 100%. Dune, 100%. I've already publicly said I want to do that. The, the new Dune movie was incredible with very cool visuals. Uh, and then, of course, Lord of the Rings, the, the, the mother, father, uncle, etc. Et of all fantasy is Lord of the Rings. And I could spend an entire year doing nothing but build... Um, Peter Jackson, Lord of the Rings inspired in particular guitars and nobody would ever get bored. That would be so cool. Um, but yeah, Robert Jordan's the, the one that came to mind. I've read that series probably five or six times now. Which is easier now that I listen to audiobooks. This is where I should have a sort of a, an audible advert or something pop up. But uh, no. Okay, uh, Lucifer Builds. I've been watching your, um, your GGBO. Uh, hi, Ben. When you make a headstock veneer, how thick do you generally go? Uh, also, do you recess or just glue it flat on an angled face of a headstock? Um, yeah, just glue it flat onto the headstock, and it's generally a millimeter and a half uh, or so. If I'm making it, uh, I tend to go a little bit thicker. So, uh, yeah somewhat underneath an eighth of an inch. One, one and a half to two millimeters uh, generally is about right. Uh, 
Okay, Rune Anson has come in with a super chat, thank you, and says, uh, Hi Ben, not a guitar related question as such, but do you at times make something from your wood off cuts, like a saxophone reed? I have never once considered making a saxophone reed. Uh, I lie, I absolutely considered making a saxophone reed once. That was a long time ago, I was about 16. Um, I... <sighs> I dream about making random things. The closest I get at the moment is toy weapons for the children, <laughs> as much as anything else. Uh, we took an offcut, um, uh, an offcut from uh, from the Ukraine build, I think, uh, the other day. Uh, Orson came in and he saw it. He's like, "That has to be a shotgun." And uh, yeah, we made a really cool. I say we. He did ninety percent of the work. Bandsaws and the uh, uh, Tritons. Bindle sander, um, and it was really cool and fun, and it was an off cut of wood, and, and ended up being something that he, you know, plays with and loves. Um, but in general, I don't actually have that much time. If I, here's soul searching. In reality, what I should do is is entirely delegate everything I do at Crimson entirely pull myself out of the company and just spend all of my time in my workshop here making stuff and I if I had that opportunity I would use all of the offcuts available and I would make hand tools uh, I would make really cool hand planes or um, or chisel handles or uh, miniature little planes like uh, like this little one that I did um, for you know stuff like this I love doing and uh, and talking about the uh, the earlier uh, discussion on depression, etc., you know that's a half day project that ends up it's a one and done. You spend half a day, you finish something, and if it works, you feel incredible. Um, so yeah, that being said, it could be fun to make some saxophone reads. JS Trucking says, Ben, I just emailed some pictures and a question about my new number seven joint to play, and it came from the UK, but the brand is one I've never heard of before. Uh, uh, and Nancy is one which is Indian, I think. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I'm not on the right computer, so we'll, I'll have to get back to you uh, on that. But I will check it out and let you know. Uh, John Hutton says, hi, Ben. Any thoughts on a name for the Ukraine baritone yet? No, um, I keep on stumbling over it. I'm, it's so, well, if I can if I can it's sort of wedged underneath a base at the moment Ta-da! Oh! John Hutton You might be the person that won this I'm diabolically bad with names uh, so yes this has had the neck glued in everything has been sanded down uh, without blowing up the workshop no I haven't thought of a name yet uh, but uh, yeah work is well underway well underway uh, there we go I actually do have A stand, a guitar stand, free over there. No, I don't. Oh wow! Mark Jennings is sending me photos of a really, really cool little, uh, uh, a little plane. It's <laughs> beautiful. Okay, and here we go. Okay, so the microphone is apparently good. Uh, on the topic with depression, distractibility. Um, somebody here is modifying three guitars along the way uh, for that lift during the tedious and grinding jobs of the build. So in other words, they're doing exactly what I said. They're, they've got a main big project that's long and hard and uh, they're doing lots of other little things in the meantime to get that lift. Uh, 
Here we go. And uh, he goes and says uh, something that, that you, i.e. me, says a lot is, what would this look like if it was easy? And that's really helped uh, this person come up with, uh, with a way to attack this issue. And yes, with, with depression, it really is. With anything. If you're writing a book, what would this look like if it was easy? Uh, and this is something that I stole from somebody who wrote a book. I think it's the guy who wrote the four hour work week. And, and it's something I heard him say, and it is now de facto, this is what I say. What would it look like if it was easy? I've got to build this, I've got to create this, I'm rebranding the guitar. What is the easiest way that's going to get to the, the, the best uh, possible outcome? And uh, there we go. Oh, here we go. Um, okay, Joe's Picks, uh, Faithful, uh, Faithful brand, not, yeah, uh, not great. They are uh, Chinese made, uh, relat relatively, they are about the cheapest planes that you can get. Uh, now I have heard of people finding a good one where the, the actual plane itself is fine, but uh, the blade will never be good enough. Uh, always replace that blade. Uh, if you if the body of the plane itself is fine, uh, then yeah, put a new blade in and it'll be fine. Uh, but in general, uh, it's it's not a great thing, and it hurts me uh, to tell you that. I apologise profusely, uh, but it is what it is. Okay. Now, I'm hoping you guys have got uh, uh, ideas for the uh, to, for the name. At the moment, it's just the baritone. Uh, yeah, cool guitar. I'm seeing changes that I want to make. That lower horn, we'll get there. Uh, Lisa Harshberger, Lisa, how are you? Um, okay, Lisa says Peter Brown had a live stream on Saturday. Uh, I told I told him to talk to you and make essentials about GGBO. He went on for five minutes about your hand tools. Um, Peter Brown is incredibly cool. I want, I've wanted to do something with him for a long time. I didn't realize he was actually going to be at Maker Central. So, uh, yeah, if he's, uh, if he's up for it, uh, he's in. Uh, Terry Love uh, says, Ben, not reviews, but a suggested reads list, any and all genres would be interesting. Okay, so I've actually... There's a there's a website that I was seriously considering uh, doing this on. Essentially, the whole thing is set up where people put together a book list, and uh, this one that I was showed was is actually a you know, revenue stream. Really, it's a, if I would get a kickback of a small percentage for every book bought or sold or, or whatever, um, but it was through talking to somebody who was doing that and was making part of their living doing that, that got, made me think really that this is something that I should do. It's just not necessarily to make money, but because people are interested in what I have to say for good or ill. Um, yes, that's something that I would like to do. Uh, initially, Campiano and Natelson on guitar building, incredible book. Uh, Oh, like seriously, people. Let's 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 do this quickly. Let's do this quickly, and this is gonna be this is gonna be interesting. Oh, you just reminded me. I bought a book this morning. Uh, Planecraft hand planing by modern methods. Now, okay. So, guitar graphic. This is a Japanese magazine, really. Uh, just lots of incredibly weird instruments uh, to look at. Uh, Blue Guitar, the Scott Chinnery Collection, incredibly good. Simon Barley's British Saws, this is the cheaper one of the two books he's written. I have both. Uh, hardening, Tempering and Heat Treatment, Workshop Devices. And then we get to the, uh, the inspiration. This is a book from the Ashmolean Museum, I think. Uh, modern Chinese art, uh, the Cohen and Michael, Michael Sullivan collection, and it's just literally. And I'll open this thing 
go and find something I like the look of, and you'll end up with uh, was it shred? <laughs> you know, random. Uh, essential William Morris. Again, same thing. I would love to put some William Morris patterns into an inlay or two. Uh, Mind-blowingly cool. And this is literally just a handful of books that I've got access to immediately. Treasures of the Goldsmith's Art. Uh, that's another good one. The Sheffield Knife Book. Uh, Japanese Woodworking Tools. Uh, the Hand Plane Book. Here we go. If you're into guitar building, if you're into anything to do with <sighs> tools, um, Garrett Hack, The Hand Plane Book. This is incredible, and I think I've actually got one of those Norrises here somewhere as well. Um, and then another one is The Perfect Edge by Ron Hock. Mind-blowingly cool. Okay, I'm sorry I went off on a tangent there. You're used to this by now, aren't you? <sighs> Alrighty. But yeah, I think a book list would be uh, well worth doing. And uh, yeah, I'd, I'd like to I'd like to sit down and do that. JS Trucking and Guitar says that email should be on WhatsApp now. SE Guitars replied to the last super chat before you did. Lol. Well, there we go. Yeah, so it's a silver line plane. It's not very good. Uh, it has the potential to be okay, but if you can find the same size uh, vintage Stanley or something, then it will be infinitely better. Um, okay. <sighs> Now, questions. Tutum Carmen. Ben, please read this. We all take the mickey about how long builds are taking, but we would all really hate it if you built them too quickly. We all enjoy every episode. No, I appreciate that. And I'm not doing, I'm not going to do a one day build kind of a thing. I'm not physically capable anymore. Uh, either physically or mentally capable of uh, rushing too much. Okay. Okay, uh, Johan von Lupi, a uh, good name, especially given the context, is my relief from absences uh, due to P PTSD is being a crafty and all the countless projects I've filled my life with. Uh, and it really is, it really, really is uh, one of those amazing things. Uh, Vladimir for the Ukraine guitar name, simple. Uh, I, I'm, I'm very much within this, what is the word I'm looking for? I'm walking a fine line. I don't want to come across as being uh, opportunistic or virtue signaling and all of that. I, I, we, we raised, I think it was about 14,000 uh, pounds in total. I haven't worked out the final Super Chats yet because that payment hasn't actually come through uh, from YouTube to me to then make the payment. Uh, it was 12,700 odd quid via the, the, the raffle has raised and went to uh, British Red Cross uh, Ukraine appeal. Um, it really, I really, if I could do this without anybody knowing that I was doing it, that would be excellent. And, but to call the guitar something that, <sighs> I've raised the money and we've done the deed, we've done the thing, the guitar itself now is what it is. And yeah, I don't know, I, I feel torn to be honest. Whew. Terry Love says, good, speed running a build is too much pressure. Uh, I, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not doing it again. It'll happen. I'll do a one day build and it'll surprise the hell out of everybody. Uh, JS Trucking says, that's not true, Ben. You can do a one day build if it's a kit and not a scratch build. Well, I can do even a scratch if I don't allow myself to get uh, distracted. The I, I was thinking that uh, this base could potentially be a one day build. It's a fretless, one piece neck, one piece body, but uh, yeah, I ended up wanting to do a better instrument than a one day build would have ended up being, and uh, here we are. I'll potentially finish it tomorrow, and that's 
three working days and it'll still be under 24 hours. Uh, that's not difficult to do at all. It's just 24 hours spread out over a three day period. Uh, Melvin Hiscock's uh, Hiscock, good book. The Real Wonky Dog says books are therapeutic. Uh, Leonardo Los Penata has some useful books on guitar building. He, uh, I've only read the one. I remember having a bit of an issue with the design book, and for the life of me, I can't remember what it was. Uh, even rereading it, I can't figure out what my problem was. Um, so there we go. Um, Kevin Harvey says, I'm using Quang Sheng blades in some of my Stanleys. I like them, and I'm thinking of trying the Ray Isles blade in my number five plane. Um, okay, Ray Isles is a powerhouse. He's incredibly talented. Uh, Quang Sheng are Chinese. Uh, that's a Quang Sheng, that's a Quang Sheng. That's a Quang Sheng. Really good. <laughs> and you can actually see them. Really good for the money, not cheap Chinese. They are they are quality tools and good quality steel in general. I've not had a bad one. Uh, I have not. I have got a Ray Isles blade in a drawer. I've never actually put it in a plane. It's a weird size that I got through a workshop clearance somewhere. Um, I don't know if you'll notice the difference, but it's entirely possible you will. I you know, I've, I've got these chisels here and they are just slightly less hard wearing than the Ashley Isles that I'm used to. And the Ashley Isles chisels are made by the brothers of Ray Isles. Uh, he went off and did his own thing. And uh, yeah, that's their, uh, yeah, just for fun. All right. JS Trucking says, except for the Faithful and the Stanley, all of my other planes were found in antique stores. I, seriously, so you're driving around in a truck. I, I would love to do that and just stop at every other antique store. Or, uh, oh, it would be great. Huh. Borgonian Evolution says, how about the Ukraine baritone be called the Sustainian, as it is built to help sustain Ukrainians in need during this end, this sad time. <clears throat> That's a really good name. Let me uh, photograph that. I reached for my phone and, and got the wine instead. Ah. Okay. Alrighty, so we've got 162 people watching. And only 79 likes, so I'm doing something wrong today. Boris the Baritone. A Lord of the Rings series, this is from John Hutton, says, uh, would be utterly tremendous. Uh, call it Barry. Creeverice says he really needs to try a Hawk blade after all Ben's praises. Uh, Hawk. The blades are fantastic, they really, really are. Uh, there are others. Um, the Kuangsheng are probably not quite as good, but they're, they're bloody good. Um, but his book on sharpening, if you are at all interested, I don't think anybody could do that better. Okay. Uh, Jedi Master Squirrel. <laughs> ha! Call the baritone Hope. Do you know what? That's it. I, th I think that's it. Why did I write that on the guitar? I don't know. Uh, but there we go. That's it. I like that. Okay. Uh, JS Trucking uh, came in and said, uh, one of my number five planes is for parts only because the sole is cracked, but it doesn't have a removable frog. It has a permanent frog. Huh. I would like to see photos of that. Uh, Rune Arnson has come in it's again um, and says, on an acoustic guitar, would it be possible to carve the entire top struts and all from a solid piece of wood? No. Um, yes. It's possible to do anything. Is it advisable? Absolutely not. The, if you think about it, you've got a, 
I need access to, to wood and guitars and all sorts of stuff. Okay, here we go. This is actually vaguely, vaguely useful. Okay, so you've got a guitar. The top is a piece of wood with the grain all going like that. If you then carve your bracing, which is an X pattern, let's assume you're doing a, 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 an X brace system, you've got your X and then you've got sort of fingers of wood going off and you've got a, a, a thicker section underneath the bridge and another one here and transverse braces and all of that jazz. Those are long grain. So you've got your grain going here, then you've got another piece of long grain going that way and then another piece of long grain going that way. If it's all going there, you're losing all of the strength of having uh, a piece of long grain going at an angle to another piece of long grain. If you have a crack, the crack is gonna crack entirely through the entire top, the brace that you've carved into the top, the, 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 the bridge plate, etc., etc., etc. all of that jazz. You, you don't have any extra strength because you've got the grain is just doing what it is. Uh, the braces are there to give strength and stability and to allow you to have a very, very thin spruce or, or cedar or whatever you're using as the top uh, plate. If you carve it entirely in one piece, then it's going to have to be much, much thicker just to stop it cracking. And thus you're going to have very limited acoustical response. Uh, this, is a, uh, this is a guitar that we made a long time ago. While it was being put together for a show, the luthier managed to drop superglue on the top. In the process of fixing that, he managed to just destroy the guitar. He's no longer with us. He survived, but he, and I didn't fire him because of this. Uh, I'm just saying he doesn't currently work with us anymore, although actually he is a very, very good luthier now. Um, and I wouldn't say no if he wanted to come back. That whole debacle notwithstanding. hey yi yi Now... Uh, okay, Kruverai says, uh, I've got three, a silver line, number four, worst plane ever. Uh, this is what uh, Kruverai says. A Juma low angle block plane and a Veritas low angle jack. I have not heard of Juma, J-U-U-M-A. Um, cool. Paul Need says, I've got a nice ash offcut from my body blank that I will be making a fret wire bender from, just need bolts and bearings. Um, eBay is your friend. Kevin Harvey, hey Kevin, says, I'm using a Kuangsheng blades in some of my Stanleys. I like them, and I'm thinking of trying the Ray. Oh, I've already read that one. My God, sorry. How do I end up back this far? Okay. The Modern Blacksmith is a great book for anyone using hand tools. That is not a book I've heard of. <laughs> no creep right, nobody did. They all know I've been distracted. Barry Christian says, if you're torn, call it Natalie, then laugh. Black Wraith says, tangents, Ben, the tangents of your tangents are tangenting into cosines. <laughs> uh, that's a good point. E.R. Webster says, guitars can and perhaps should be named by their new owner. That really is a good point. Okay. Good question. Goth Rider Creations. Hey, Bun. D 
Do you think IKEA grade melamine covered chipboard is even an option for a guitar body? I need to find a cheap option given the price of timber. Thanks. <sighs> It is an option. Uh, I don't think the chipboard will ever actually work very well for a guitar by dint of the physical, the way it's been built. Now, that being said, I used to think that pine was not an option for guitar building, and I'm seriously considering, <laughs> uh, or softwoods of that ilk at least, I'm seriously considering re releasing a series of guitars made in that. Uh, I have seen people use uh, essentially balsa wood, skinning it in carbon fibre and making world-renowned guitars. Uh, Gus Guitars. Gus Guitars did exactly that using, I think, cedar, so basically bog-standard softwood, and Prince ended up, uh, you know, loving that guitar. Uh, by all accounts. So would the melamine and how hard that is counteract the issues of the internal chipboard? I think it would work and I think it would be a surprisingly good guitar. I can't believe I talked myself into that. Wow. Now. Okay, I, I need questions, people. Uh, Lucent Custom Guitar says, I loved my Pine Strat, super lightweight. Yeah, well, that's the thing. It's important to have a nice lightweight guitar. How difficult is Zirukote to work with? That's from Leon. Um, not difficult at all in comparison to other hardwoods. Uh, I don't even think it's particularly waxy. It's a hard wood. You will need to use good quality sharp tools uh, or uh, or sanders, I suppose. But uh, no, it's it's a it's a it's a good, nice. Um, it's a nice wood to work with. I've used it on a few recent guitars. Okay, so I've now got the photos here from Joe. Oh. Nice. Okay. Um, Joe, I can't quite place that plane. The cap iron is from a Stanley, a vintage Stanley Liberty Bell kind of a thing, I think. Um, I think it's a budget line made by Stanley, possibly a Defiance brand, but I, I don't, well, Use Defiance brand as somewhere to start from. It's a nice looking play, actually. And uh, yeah, uh, Juma is Kuangshang, actually. Huh. So my Kuangshang here has got a Luban written on it. Go figure. Um, okay, Terry. Oh, Terry, I love this idea. Terry's coming with another super chat and says, maybe guitars should be like pedigree cats. They have a breeder's or pedigree name. The owners end up calling them something else daily. I, uh, yeah, I think that's a really good name. Uh, a really good idea. Should, should, I, should I send guitars out that I've made by hand with birth certificates and all of that, like um, Cabbage Patch Dolls used to do? Ugh. Oh my gosh. Uh, yeah, and it's a pity about that crack on Joe's plane there. Anyway. Now. Lisa, fantastic question. Okay, Lisa says, if you plot the weight of wood over time, if slash when it goes steady, does that mean it's dry enough to work with, please? Uh, essentially, yes. So, so yeah, I mean, literally, that's exactly how you do it. Another book, uh, another book that I've got, but that is, uh, I think, in the library up at the house, 
is something called understanding wood and it go it's it's like it's heavy going but uh, part of the uh, part of the the process there and how you actually absolutely accurately measure uh, moisture content and all of that is literally the weight of the water and uh, yeah, wood turners will do the same thing. They'll um, they'll have a blank and they'll cut it down to size, or they'll roughly turn it to something thirty percent bigger than than they want to turn in the end. Uh, they'll weigh it right on the wood what the weight is, and then go back in six months' time and weigh it again, and then a month time after that and weigh it and see if there's much difference. And as exactly when it stops losing weight, it's it's reached equilibrium. Uh, equilibrium moisture content it's when it can't take on any more or lose any more moisture in its current environment and that is the point at which you can build a guitar out of it <sighs> okay jay's trucking says yeah i don't know the brand because my two extra number fives other than the stanley that i restored already do not have the brand name or patent numbers um, potentially defined i think that uh, cap iron there is uh, potentially worth uh, people, uh, transitional planes use that cap iron as well, I think. Um, it's not something that comes over to this side of the pond very often. But uh, yeah, beautiful. Terry Love says, guitar pedigree sound like a good idea. My first cat was Mamula, Mamula Prince. Uh, we called him Ming, Siamese, or Ratbag when he was being an ass. So he was called Ratbag all the time then, yeah? Um, we, yeah, we have three cats, one of whom is 16, and the other two are now... Wow. Actually, two or three years old now. But, uh, yeah, one of them in particular is a total, total dickhead. Just... Yeah. John Hutton agrees, says, Hope is a very good shot. Excellent. <laughs> Creeper says, I suggest that today's Super Chats go into a fund for a new microphone system. The system itself is fine, I just keep on destroying the actual microphones. Uh, the problem is the, the, the vices, and there's one on either side of the, of the bench here, the handles always catch the, the mic leads and they just, they just die. So yeah, buy the cheap ones and, uh, and be done with it. Micah Nell says, I carved my first neck last week and decided on an angle grinder. Entirely out of coincidence, I was simultaneously watching the neck carve on the base. It was way easier than I'd imagined. Seriously? Yes. Uh, an angle grinder is surprisingly easy to control when you're using a flap disc. It's surprisingly easy to control to within, you know, a millimetre or so of where you want to be and then, you know, a saw rasp or, or file or something like that is, yeah, it's all you need to, to finish up. <sighs> oh, I am knackered. Okay, Robert R says, Dan from Guns and Guitars built a guitar about nine months ago where he used found construction grade 2x4s and a top of what some people call strand board or real cheap multi-directional plywood and then you leave your comment there without telling us if it was any good uh, i did see that advertised and didn't actually end up watching the video uh, mr waffle says my current environment's equilibrium is 16 percent pnw things uh 16 percent in general the uk is about 14 percent or so depending on where you are so yeah, air dried timber will end up at somewhere between 12 and 14% in general in the UK, which is fine. I play Vidya games. Uh, says, uh, years ago I took the frets off my base to make it a ghetto fretless. What would I need to measure when buying fret wire? Um, 
uh, medium jumbo is probably what you want, to be honest. But uh, I would say go back, go to the... Okay, you need to measure the... You've got 22 frets and you'll need enough fret wire to replace all 22 frets with say a quarter of an inch or so overhang so make sure you've got enough uh, of length that way that way to figure out what the actual size of the fret wire should be uh, medium jumbo is a fairly good uh, shout but uh, go back to the manufacturer of the of the base in particular and see what they used you should be able to find that on a forum somewhere uh, i'm sure uh, super chats coming in thick and fast thank you guys um uh, wow, Fat Fish Guitar sent ten pounds. Uh, thank you very much. And that's not a name. I'm sure I would remember that name. Uh, thanks for all the video content. It's an absolute pleasure. Thank you for your support. It says I'm comp I'm contemplating a four string cigar box type build. Will I need a truss rod, or would an untruss rodded neck be able to withstand the tension of four strings? I built my first uh, cigar box guitar. Somebody brought me a cigar box. And there and then that, like literally I said, ha, huh, fun, cool, let's build one. And I spent the afternoon building one. And uh, that instrument is up at my house. There is some movement in the neck, but surprisingly little. It's been strung up for five or six or seven years. Now the build is on the, on the YouTube channel, does not have a truss rod. Most cigar box guitars do not have truss rods. And if the wood is dry, should be fine. Now the problem is a lot of wood just wants to mess your whole day up. So yeah, choose the wood carefully. Uh, if you can go quarter sawn, go quarter sawn. But in general, yeah, uh, go for it. And uh, yeah, thanks again for the, uh, for the super chat. My son is asking for more time. And uh, yes, hold on. Done. Rune Anson has come back in and says, would a slice of burl do it as a top on an acoustic guitar? Uh, you seem to have a thing for, for, for weak tops. Uh, no, I'm afraid not. Uh, again, it's entirely about the grain. Uh, in fact, Don't think I've even seen a successful acoustic guitar with a burl back and sides. Uh, it's just, ha, I built one. Um, burl maple back and sides on, on Nebula. Um, and top for that matter, but it's not a traditional acoustic and it's not under the same amount of tension. Uh, I'm gonna have to say based on that, it depends. It depends entirely on the burl. It depends on how strong it is and how stable. If you want a, a good sounding acoustic guitar, then the, the recipe has been decided and there's not that much that you can do about it. A Sitka spruce top with fine straight grain, uh, a, a Western red cedar top with fine straight grain, uh, will get you a certain type of sound. A Sitka spruce top can be thinner because it's a bit stronger. It will take a little bit of time to work into the eventual tone of the guitar, but it will have a specific type of sound. Uh, you want to have, and I absolutely understand and agree with the temptation or the, uh, not even the temptation, the, the compulsion to move things forward and experiment and try new things. But uh, one of my biggest regrets is an acoustic guitar that I built. It was a commission. It was a commission that was a present for somebody else. And they want, the, the, the person doing the commissioning wanted a flame maple top. Uh, there was something to do with the sun actually. And there was a great big sun inlay on this guitar. And, and it looked for the quality of work I was doing back then, this is very early on, it looked great, but it did not sound very good because I was experimenting. Um, 
was because we were experimenting. And honestly, I think about that guitar three or four times a year, and I feel guilty that this person got given this wonderful present that actually wasn't. And it really makes me feel bad. So, yeah, it's, it's one of those things. <sighs> that being said, That being said, you can compensate to a certain extent by the way that you construct the thing. So, yeah, there are always ways around these things. It doesn't have to be a full acoustic guitar. It could be something like Nebula, which was actually not that acoustic and didn't sound that great acoustically, but sounded really good with piezos, etc. Uh, Robert asked, just sent a $10 super chat with no question. Robert, if there is a question, please send it through. If not, um, oh, here we are. He says, Dan's guitar turned out pretty nice, really. Fantastic. Um, and thank you. <laughs> Paul Needs says, three cats? Beginner. We have six that we live to serve. Luna Fredlick. Ah. I was going to do that really fast. Uh, Luna, Frederick, Spike, Mouse, <laughs> Lupin, and Bobcat. All very different personalities. I have, I have three cats, three children. Now one guinea pig, uh, one dog and two puppies, and a gecko. And three children. Some would say four, considering my personality issues. Uh, but yes, I think uh, a lot of cats is one of those things. Uh, let me guess, you live in a, in a single bed flat uh, and they really just, your entire life is cats. Because that would actually drive me insane. Um, yeah. Now, do 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 do. <laughs> Listen, Custom Guitar says, I cannot imagine more than the two cats we have. They are handfuls. Terry Love says, burl as a veneer uh, on top of a more conventional top for the looks uh, could actually work. I was also thinking at one point about uh, the potential option of a double top guitar, which um, essentially is veneers and no mix, I think. I've never made one, but uh, yeah, good. Uh, they have a following. Lisa says, don't forget Tanya. I, I could never forget Tanya. Um, she is she is the overriding mind that keeps control over all of this, um, and she is not a pet. She's the ringmaster of all of the pets. Uh, Yarl Webster says I've had three cats before. That is too many. Two is enough for me. Sandman and Nimbus, good names. All of our pets are named by young children at this point, and I can't wait until uh, that is no longer necessarily the case. New ones will have, um, yeah, cooler names. <laughs> Andre Silva says, if I had three cats, I'd be Eric, Jack, and Ginger. You can't beat that. Um, my, my original two cats were called Rock and Roll, just for shits and giggles. Um, Mr. Waffles says, and chickens, sadly not. Um, we had two chickens left. Um, <sighs> uh, spaghetti Noodle Doodle Doo got taken by a fox. And uh, in that same week, the neighbors lost six and the other neighbors uh, lost four or five. Uh, so Caramel was the only one left. I found her a home with a, a, a big flock. Uh, and uh, yeah, she's now, she's now happy, but I'm sad. Um, I love that damn chicken. Jonas Trucking says you should have another picture in the WhatsApp. I think I've already... Oh no. Oh nice. Alrighty, so we've got a Miller's Falls, a big Miller's Falls, a vintage Stanley with uh, the handle, then you've got some nice planes there. Yeah, that other one is a Defiance, I'm sure of it. And then a Sergeant. <sighs> nice collection. I, yeah. 
So one thing I would love to visit the States and just rummage around antique shops, uh, going on tool hunting trips, it would be just so much fun. <laughs> Goth Rider Creation says, last question if I may, could I be cheeky and just cut up a file and some wood to make my own fret end file? Absolutely. And it's not cheeky if you have, I am, I, I love the fact that the tools, the, the luthiest tools that we make have absolutely enabled and created the ability for me to be able to do what I do here on YouTube. The ad revenue, the super chats, all of this sort of stuff is only, it's, it's, no, it's not enough to, to pay for the behemoth that is having two full-time editors and myself working full-time and multiple cameras and lights. It, it just isn't. All of this is paid for really by the fact that people buy hand tools. And I'm, I'm not saying that to, to get you to, to buy a tool from me. I started making these because I couldn't afford what Stumac was doing. And when I did, uh, I, bought a, uh, I bought a leveling file from them and it was so shit. It was absolutely not straight or um, just absolutely not. Um, I now know through bitter experience just how difficult it is actually getting a properly flat uh, leveling file. It ain't easy. Um, but that absolutely affronted me. I left the lid off my glue earlier. And I started making them myself. And I 100% understand and even condone people going and doing the same thing. Now, if you are pressed for time, buy one. If you've got time, if you want to experiment, and if you're a tool maker, make them. I cannot believe how many of these we make. Like, we constantly have a batch of sort of 50 or 60 of these things being made all the time at Crimson. It is a piece of wood with some felt. A little bit of routing, a little bit of cutting, a little bit of sanding, a little bit of shaping. Any one of you could make one of these, but most people don't. And these pay for everything. And the 20 odd staff that we've got, it's 25 now, somewhere about that. Um, the school also, but yeah, a lot of people, while they could do it, they don't want to. And that's who my customers are. If you want to, Make yourself one. Hell, you might even be able to make a better one than I have. Uh, if so, send me photos and I'll improve what we do. Um, same thing with the fret end beveling file. It's not going to be too difficult to make a, to make a better one than me. In my opinion. Uh, the fret end beveling file is one that... Uh, I don't particularly like, and we're, we're working on different versions of it as we speak. Terry Love says, your foxes must have been running a fried chicken place. I, it was, yeah, three properties worth, all locked in, etc., and pff, gone. Uh, Magic Music Adam says, just the one cat named Millicent after Black at his goddaughter and Christmas Carol. Nice. Okay. Mr. Waffles has a dog and Australian catalogue. Oh, beautiful. Uh, they're supposed to be smart. Mine appears to be broken. Good, things he's, good thing he's cute. Now, alrighty, well look, we're, we seem to be running low on questions and queries. Uh, J.A. Stoddart says, any plans for a distributor in the States yet? Uh, shipping is stopping me from buying from you. It's, it's not currently financially viable, unfortunately. It, it just isn't the, the, it would need a huge, um, initial outlay that we, we just don't have. Uh, hell, just just in 
in creating the tools and getting them over there so there's enough there to, to deal with demand at this point we are not currently able to do uh, it is something that i want to do but uh, yeah it's <laughs> it's a big nightmare uh, unfortunately and i'm sorry i really am sorry <sighs> Drop us an email, shop at crimsonguitars.com. Um, say Ben wants to investigate uh, slower shipping to the States to see if there's any anything we can do on price. At the moment, basically this, where we currently sit is um, when, when COVID initially hit, we immediately started losing packages, you know, two, 300 quids worth of tools just gone bye bye that we were replacing and we were losing thousands and thousands of pounds a, a month uh, in replacing these things so at, because of that because the system the world went crazy and so much more was getting lost we've had to go to a point where everything is tracked and signed which is more expensive which costs you more uh, there might be an option now that things are slowing down to go with um Instead of air, maybe uh, shipping uh, via ship, etc. Um, yeah, it's it's one of the many things that we need to do. <laughs> Lisa says, any staff yet for the website, Ben? Don't talk to me about staff. Uh, we are still struggling. We're still struggling to find uh, quality people. It seems that... Uh, uh, no, I lie. I lie. We are now very, very happy with the people that we've got. Emphatically, I couldn't say that um, with more feeling. Uh, but yeah, it's not an easy thing. So the website is very much still uh, just the current admin team uh, trying our best. And now that being said, there are things that are being being done on this, so we're getting there. Uh, Tutum Carmen says, I restored a Stanley 803 the other day. It made me happy to get an old tool working properly again. Stanley 803, is that the drill? A little, um, little hand drill. It, it really is a great thing. Adair Guitars. Hey, I'm watching your... Um, I'm really enjoying... I really, really enjoy uh, your GGBOs. Uh, what's... Oh, now I've lost the question. Come on. There we go. What's better for filling gaps in inlays on an ebony fretboard? Black superglue or clear superglue and ebony dust? Uh, probably clear superglue super and ebony dust, to be honest. Uh, but actually, <laughs> black superglue and ebony dust. Uh, just go the whole hog and, and, uh, and, and do that. Uh, Gitli says, not cheeky. I made three file blocks years ago and I still use them. Absolutely. So here, look. I'm about to put my foot in my mouth a little bit. I, I stopped watching Ken Parker's videos because I was getting a feeling that... They say never meet your heroes. And... I was meeting my hero and I was not enjoying the process because there's some things that he thinks that I disagree with. And the other day I watched him, uh, I watched him do a, 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 a fret level. I actually want to go like that, a fret level. that just hurt and the method that he is using <coughs> excuse me i just blew a bunch of dust off me into my in, into my throat um, the method he was using was horrifically imprecise horrifically imprecise now, my point here is he's using 
a method that he came up with 40 years ago, that he was taught by somebody who was taught 60 years ago or more, and it works okay. Now, a handmade leveling file, my first handmade leveling file was not perfect, but got a result that was fine ish. And then I started using crimson leveling files that were had at one point we were actually putting truss rods in our leveling files so you could adjust for any small issues um, and it was night or day like really amazing and I'm now using leveling beams which are orders of magnitude more level because you're talking about a much much finer substrate that you're using than the teeth on the file etc and I am able to get a fret level that is within microns of perfect. But what Ken Parker was doing with his nibbling away at those frets, and I so respect him for what he's managed to do, he is leaving so much on the table of what is possible from a playability point of view, from removing buzz, from, from comfort, from low action, and all of that jazz. He's getting something that's playable, but nowhere near actually good enough, in my opinion. Please go and watch that video and tell me I'm wrong. Uh, and, and that's the thing. So, uh, now I don't, I'm, I'm not going to say that your tools here, uh, who was it, Git Lee, made three file blocks years ago. You might have made three really, really, really good file blocks that are absolutely perfect, but you also possibly, and I really don't want to insult anybody here, that's not what I'm trying to say. Um, it's sounding like I'm insulting you and I don't mean to. Shut up, Ben. Um, they might be good enough to get a good enough result. And, and you don't know any better. And for a decade or more, I was not getting the results that I knew I should be getting. And it took working with Robert Fripp to realize that my, I was nowhere near the luthier than I thought it was because my setups absolutely sucked and when I dove into it it was because my tools were not as precise as I thought they were and I wasn't I wasn't using what I had to the right ability so yeah if you can make tools make tools but make them as good as possible that's what I'm trying to say um, I don't care whether you buy them from me or or Stu Mac, or I mean, there are cheaper options out there that are basically, in my opinion, scams, but uh, I, I don't care about that. If you can make it, absolutely make it. Just please be better than I was when I first started and make sure that they're actually good. I, I think I taught myself out of a hole there. Please let me know in the comments if I did. <sighs> Rage Quit says, I'm making a killing with repairs. Repairs are 100% uh, if you're good at it and if you enjoy it. Uh, repairs are something that... Shit, I've got a hole to repair. Damn it. Yeah, see? I, mm, I avoid. <sighs> okay, Terry Love says, Ben, has there been any movement on the name for the high-end range yet it's not necessarily a high-end range it's just just the range of guitars that uh, have been made i th think yes i think we're just going to use my name uh it's something i've been avoiding because i really don't want to appear um too up my own ass really uh and it's a bit traditional but I, th I think that's where we're going, basically. So, yeah, it should be interesting. Uh, Leon says, uh, when will the student diary videos or what's on the bench replacement go live? I miss what's on the bench on Fridays. We have filmed another what's on the bench uh, with the end of the three month students. Uh, at the moment, it's, uh, well, we don't know. I haven't got a replacement quite lined up. There is a lot going on. There's a hell of a lot going on. I'm working on more than a dozen videos. Well, not right now, but at the moment, over and above live streams and bits and pieces. Um, ha, Joe Bryan, uh, this might have been answered 
already. Are you sticking with Random for the custom brand? Just being nosy and will gladly accept a free shirt if you choose an earlier pick of mine. Um, <laughs> uh, honestly, I think Random would make a great clothing brand. Uh, yeah, there we go. As I've just said, um, we're probably going to end up sticking with just using my name, which a lot of people suggested. Now. Sweet Tea Guitar says, I love the fret end dressing file so much I ordered a second one. It's good to have spares. Seriously, when I started, when my sander earlier started blowing up, uh, well, at least tripping the fuse in the workshop, um, I'm so glad I had a, uh, a spare. I've got a, a budget Triton sander here that's now been discontinued that at least helped me finish the job. <sighs> Ba -dum -ba -dum -bum. Guitar Addicts Workshop. Your opinions on Japanese chisels? The good ones are great, the cheap ones are good. That's a good little Amazon review there, isn't it? Uh, yeah, the, the cheaper ones are, are really good. The Jap they, they know, the Japanese know how to make a good tool and they don't tend to make bad ones in my, in my experience. Um, now, the, the the steel and I haven't got a huge amount of experience with the chisels at the very least um, but the steel tends to be a little bit harder than we would normally uh, use uh, in the West and as such is a little bit more brittle and tends to chip now that might literally be the fact that I've had a couple of uh, Japanese planes where that's been the, the case and it's just you know bad luck um, but a lot of people swear by them and I trust those people and yeah Japanese chisels in fact I'm on a chisel hunt right now uh, so yeah I'll, I'll probably actually get into that Andre Silva says have you heard that Rick Turner passed away I had no idea um, yeah, I had no idea. Uh, that is, he's a sort of a, a, a god in the, uh, a god, he is a, he was a very, very talented luthier who did a lot for uh, interesting guitars and uh, boutique guitars. So that's very sad news. Um, Lisa says, would you use a camera that follows you, Ben? Um, Yes, yes, to a certain extent. So I, there's a, a gimbal made by DJI, who are owned by Apple, of course. So that means the Android app doesn't work. They've absolutely bricked that, um, the bastards. But, um, yeah, that gimbal does exactly that, and uh, I I bought one because of exactly that, so that I would be able to set up the gimbal where this camera is that you're looking at me through, and then uh, you hook it up to the app, and then the app allows the camera just follow you around. It's incredibly cool, and it would be very useful, except for the fact that that one the, the the gimbal is controlling the camera via the HDMI cable. The HDMI cable slot that I'm currently using to send the image from that camera through to my streaming software. So the two are mutually exclusive. Uh, I've got an old iPhone that uh, Sam at Crimson Guitars uh, was gonna chuck away. That's there to use for that system. And we will play with it a little bit, but um, at the moment, the, uh, the setup here is, would not work, but uh, it, yeah, it's a it's a cool thing. <sighs> Creever says, "Have you ever tried to metal leaf metal? For example, copper leaf the knobs of a tuner. Electroplating doesn't work in this case. Yes, absolutely, it's fine. It's um, uh, it's exactly the same process as, as every other thing you've seen me copper leaf or gold leaf, etc. Uh, it works fine." Uh, Kim James Stevenson says, uh, "How can you make sure you don't get neck dive?" Neck dive is a lot more, a lot less common than most people think. Uh, if you use a, a relatively traditional shape, everything except for the SG basically, 
you're not going to get neck dive unless you've got a very heavy neck and incredibly light guitar. Um, the way to avoid it though is even if you are using an SG for example is you move the placement of the uh, of the strap button that's near the bridge and move that along the body somewhere that sort of I meant to do that. Uh, it tips the balance in your favour. Uh, you can use gaffer tape to to mess around with that balance point to find where you need to be. Looks a little bit weird with the strap button being somewhere, but somewhere other than standard. But there we go. Uh, da -dum -da -dum Hold on, NTO Steve says, could the fan fret kit neck be supplied with a head with conventional uh, strat type tuner hole positions? Yes, absolutely. Drop us an email. We can do that for you without any issue, probably without any surcharge either. Uh, Sweet Tea Guitar says, the shipping cost seems easy now that I've done it once. Just make sure you order enough to justify the shipping. Uh, true that. And uh, I hate the fact that it's such an issue. I really do. As I said, I you know I started making tools because I couldn't afford the tools that I wanted, uh, and when I did, they were shit. Um, and here I am st struggling because the shipping is so expensive and the tools are expensive because it costs so much to make good quality things. Um, yeah. It's so funny how you get the same questions from multiple different people in the same uh, uh, chat. Uh, Tony Sommerdijk uh, says, Ben, what do you think about carving a casino type guitar, leaving the bracing in the carved top instead of adding it? Uh, it's a very bad idea because the point of the bracing, as I said earlier, with regards to an acoustic guitar from an another uh, commenter, the bracing itself has a uh, is long grain and it is well and a casino it's not an x brace is it it's probably two parallel braces but they're at an angle to the grain of the uh, of the top thus adding even more strength to that top um, if you have if you have a brace that is perfectly in line with the perfectly straight uh, spruce uh, top that you've got and there's a crack the crack will be alongside the brace and it will have absolutely no support if the brace is carved out of that top you've still got all of the weakness of the top without any extra strength you've just got added mass that is going to be inhibiting the tone while giving no benefits uh, so it's a it's a thought that people have and unfortunately it just won't work it, it, yeah, it could be at, actually catastrophic to the instrument long term. Bill says, Ben, uh, how is the ultimate workshop going at headquarters? I would love to come over to see it when finished. I came over on the Sunday to help. I remember, thank you, and said I can, uh, I can also spend the time buying some bits while I'm there. Uh, it is well in progress, except we realize we've got a multitude of guitar shows and make essential and things coming up. So all work kind of came to a halt and we started working on guitars. The benches are in place, the floors are down and sorted, all of the painting has been done, the office is now looking great. Um, all we really need to do is, is tool racks and, and stuff. So yeah, it's probably gonna be when we get back from the Birmingham Guitar Show in two or three weeks. Uh, we're also waiting to hear from the uh, potential producers of the TV show who are gonna be coming down with their camera crew. Uh, now, when they give us a date, that'll be the deadline. Uh, but at the moment, our deadlines are Maker Central and Birmingham Guitar Show. <sighs> yeah, we're making about 24 guitars, 26 guitars in three weeks. Um, many of them uh, from instruments that are partially made already, actually, so it's not as cool as it sounds. Borgonian Evolution says DJI is banned from US government contracts for labor abuse in third world countries. They have also been 
looked into for passing sensitive information to China from the US. I thought they were owned by a US bloody company. Um, alrighty. Well, in that case... Yeah, Lisa's saying one that you can use with your phone that's about 150 euros. That is the DJI smaller version, uh, if, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yeah, essentially, I don't like filming on my phone. The quality isn't as good as what we can do with the cameras here. And I've got the big one by their company, who now we hear is not that great. Um, really, really interesting. It's a really, really interesting bit of kit. It really is. Um, <sighs> Alrighty. Look, people, I'm thinking we're running to the end of this. Um, the questions are, are slowing down. Andre Silva says he's placed an order for some stunning stains at a template. He wanted an Iwasaki file and black star bond, but it's all out. Um, drop us an email. It might be a case that the stuff is the, maybe part of what you want is due in imminently. Uh, I'm not entirely sure, but I do know that more Starbond uh, is well on order and should be here should be here soon. Iwasaki Files is unfortunately we're back to COVID and we're back to those issues where the supply is horrific. Uh, but it will never hurt to drop an email. You'll probably end up talking to my mother, actually, who will then talk to the factory and, and uh, try and figure out if we could delay your order by a week, but you'd end up with more of the things you want. And we're the sort of company that's happy to do that sort of thing. Um, Terry. <laughs> Terry came in with a super chat and says, Ben, was that the gimbal that Talitha tried to walk away with? She actually did succeed in walking away with it, but uh, di didn't realise that I had one of the parts on my desk up at the house, so she got 99% of the way to setting it up and couldn't actually put her camera on it. <laughs> um, but yes, it was. It absolutely was. Um, Rog Pigfender says, Descendant guitars for the win. Um, I think we're still going to do... I, actually, I thought Ascendant guitars would be cool as well. Uh, Uh, JS Trucking says, Ben, I missed your reply to that last picture. It's an incredibly cool uh, collection. You've got some really nice things. Uh, I love Millis Falls. Uh, I love the uh, the Stanley in particular is really nice. And Sergeant Planes are also very, very good. The other one is probably a Defiance, I think, is a name that comes to mind. But it's a beautiful collection of tools. And if you've got them all at uh, antique shops and things like that, yeah. Congrats, it's the sort of thing that I would love to do. Just drive around looking for bargains. I spent this, this morning, it was the first time I went to a car boot sale for a long time, and there was a, a, a whole bunch of tools, and uh, I'm so out of practice, I managed to slice myself open uh, in one of the boxes. Typical. Okay. No. Okay. Space Oil Guitars is asking if he's being ghosted. Not that I know. For playlists, visit Bonehead. Yes, uh, Bonehead is currently, um, yeah, uh, has the best playlist. I completely. It, I completely forgot that we should be setting that up ourselves uh, and Bonehead has taken on the uh, uh, the task. It's something that I have asked people to do and should be done, but we'll see. Uh, Bonehead's is the playlist that I follow, Bonehead Guitars. Uh, GD Woodwork says, can you supply raw timber, i.e. mahogany body, blank flame neck and a quilted top for scratch builds? Yes. Uh, 
Uh, quilted tops are problematic at the moment, but we can find them. Uh, so in the last, in the last week, just over a week ago, I met a UK supplier who actually has a, apparently a really, really good supply of, of quilted maple. So yes, we can. Uh, drop us an email. Guitar Moggle says, have you ever used CA glue to finish a guitar body? No, it's possible. It works best on small things like pens, on lathes, etc. In big amounts, it is horrific. Uh, the fumes are terrible, very unhealthy. They get absolutely everywhere, and I wouldn't suggest it. Okay, so there we go. Uh, Bill's offering to help again. I'll take you up on that um, if we need it. Uh, I really do appreciate your support uh, the other day. And uh, Guitar Alex Workshop says, have you ever done wire inlay on a guitar? I was watching on Enquador's Cultic guitar. It looked really cool. Uh, never successfully, but I think I could probably put it off nowadays. And yeah, that, uh, that looks incredible. And uh, yeah. Space Oil Guitar says, what about adding multi-scale fretboards to the store with bridge angle spec? I'd rather not buy an entire kit neck. Uh, we can do absolutely anything that you want. If you want a, a fan fret at a specific angle, etc., the only thing is that we will have to charge you a designing fee to draw it, which wouldn't necessarily be horrendous. We're not talking about I was talking to a company the other day who prototype guitars and they charge seven and a half thousand pounds to to make the first prototype and that includes drawings so essentially it's five grand worth of drawing time for CNC stuff um, we charge an, a, a relatively low hourly rate to do that um, and if it's something that we already have or that we can do easily there's no charge so seriously for custom custom kits for custom kit parts or guitar parts that are that you know that we make in any case or customizations on any kit that we currently do we offer it we do it it's on the listings in all of the kit things hey if you want us to customize this drop us an email drop them an email we can do it uh, and and we want your business so yeah please do disco stew quick question do you have any tips for correctly Solid color spraying a double bound thin line telly uh, for getting it level after scraping, etc. <sighs> Pay somebody else to do it. Uh, okay, no, uh, other than that, so the issue is it's bound and you are spraying on a thin coat of solid color, but that is going to be over an undercoat and you will have the dip at the binding. Essentially what you have to do is spray on more lacquer on the binding and on that area to bring it up to level and then you spray uh, the whole guitar and you end up with something that uh, sands down flat. It involves putting on quite a lot of lacquer, I'm afraid. But uh, yeah, in this particular case, I would spray just around the edges uh, or over the edges uh, uh, carefully, <laughs> of course. Uh, until it's built up to a point where it looks good and then spray a normal amount of lacquer over the rest of the instrument. Um, but yeah, 72, 72 reissue, flame maple, um, Japanese made, flame maple topped Japanese made Telecaster is one of the guitars that got away in my youth and I miss that guitar. Oh yes, I do. Terry Love, anybody used something like cactus juice to impregnate the wood for necks and bodies? I've seen knife makers use it for knife scales. We use it at Crimson. Um, it's difficult to do because you have to, uh, essentially for guitars, it's much bigger. You've got to have a big vacuum chamber. You put the, uh, the cactus juice in the chamber with the wood. You pull out all of the air. Then you have to cook the wood. Then you have to do the whole thing again two or three times. And it's a... Uh, it's a palaver, it's a lot of work, but it's also absolutely worth it in uh, some cases. So, so yeah, uh, it's, it's worth doing. Okay, 
Now. Paul Needs asks if these new graphene car waxes are any use for guitars. Supposedly totally non-stick, tough and long-lasting. Sounds intriguing. I've, I've not... Um, I've not heard of them. I... Uh, yeah. My van needs a clean at this point. Can't think of it. Uh, Jamie Roll says, Ben, I've always loved looking at your vintage tools on the wall. I'm happy you don't live in an earthquake-prone region. You would certainly lose a few toes every year. I've... Um, yeah, the chisels are 100% in there, they won't fall down, but I, I did actually drop a plane that I thought was magnetically attached in there, and, uh, and wasn't. The tool racks are at a slight angle, uh, most of these have, there's no magnets there either. I need to sort out magnets, there's magnets on the big ones. There you go. Uh, but uh, I am actually... <laughs> I'm in the process of building an extension to this workshop in there with higher ceilings. Uh, this, I need something where the overhead camera is, is just out of view. It's annoying. And quite frankly, that ceiling there behind my head, I, I, it, it would be better if I had a, a better set. So I'm going to be moving all of this over there and rethinking the tool racks in any case. Um, anyhow, there we go. Fukumi says, I love my crimson leveling beam, although I will need a bigger one for more bases. Um, bigger is better in, 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 in this particular case, but it's a law of diminishing returns. You, uh, if you've got a, a 12 inch, you could probably, you would probably be okay. Um, 16 inches is, 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 is a little bit better, a little bit more precise. Um, no, they're both as precise, but on a long, a, on a long length, the longer one is better. It's the same as uh, as hand blades. Ooh, we've got somebody saying, oh, and message deleted by Paul Cook. Well done, Paul. Report. Uh, pornography report. Ha ha. Cool. You guys are great. Uh, okay, Gabor. Hi Ben, I have a question about wood staining. How can you achieve the same colour on different woods? <laughs> I'm trying to stain the guitar body, which is pine, and the face of the guitar head, which is oak. It is so difficult, it is literally trial and error. The substrate colour makes a big difference. Pine itself is actually quite difficult to stain in the first place. Uh, I would suggest... I would suggest potentially suspending the stain in lacquer. Uh, and spraying it, and that way you end up essentially with a solid colour, which is probably not what you're actually after. Uh, Jules has come in with a super chat. They're still coming in right at the end. Uh, thank you, Jules. Uh, what size is the saw you use to make the inlays on the hand build? I would like to buy one. Do you have any? Uh, it is this size. Uh, it's a little eclipse uh, number 50 PS. Uh, jeweler's, jeweler's saw. Uh, jeweler's piercing saw, I suppose. I do not know if we've got any at, at uh, the vintage tool shop at the moment, uh, but please drop them an email and say Ben can give you more information on the tool if you need to. It's the one he used in the hand tool build. And Safi will ask, and I'll just send her a photo of this from here. And she'll be able to know if we don't have one in stock we may well have one if we don't have one in stock and for sale we might well have one that she knows of that has not yet been listed um, we are also getting new tools very similar to that a little bit bigger i think that are actually really good that we will be selling this wine is really nasty You'll notice I haven't drunk the whole thing. Okay. Paul Cook says, twitchy mod finger. It was, yeah. Okay. 
Loosened custom guitars. Is I can't believe I'm still talking after two, yep, yeah, nearly two hours. Um, is there a point where a twisted neck is too far gone? I have a 25 year old BC Rich Acoustic Mockingbird. Huh. I've been restoring and right at the end I've noticed it is warped and twisted. Uh, you can, it depends. Okay, now if the warp is away from your hand, that's not a bad thing. It actually means that it keeps this part of your wrist from straining. It keeps it down that way and it improves the playability. Necks are built with that as a feature. So I hope that's your case. Uh, if not, you can 100% uh, take the frets out, plane the fretboard flat, and essentially flatten the top of the neck by leaving some of the fretboard there, put a new fretboard on. The guitar will be a little bit thicker in places, and you might need to then uh, reshape the neck a little bit in order to make it thinner. It depends on how much material you have to leave on there. But in general, it's at the edge and it's one or two millimeters and you won't actually feel the difference on the guitar. So there is nothing that is not, there, there are few things that are utterly irrecoverable from. Good luck. Okay. Lisa Harshberger says, do we need to get you a better wine than this one, 100%. Um, I don't know, Tanya, Tanya was shopping with Orson today and uh, he's a very smart little cookie and uh, he was at the checkout. He, he said to her, I've had the story already. He said, I didn't see you put that wine in the basket, uh, in, in, in the trolley. And because uh, I didn't even go down the wine aisle, this was uh, just rapidly grabbed. Oh, that looks all right. Grabbed off the end of the aisle, and uh, it really isn't very nice, but it is what it is. Um, yeah, it will not be finished. Okay, Fukumi says, if I want to bridge the gap between me and my almost 16 year old son, do I use a tunematic, a hardtail, or just be flexible and go for a Floyd? Uh, that is entirely up to you and your son. In my opinion, personally, I love tunematics. I, I love tunematics, I love hardtail bridges. They give, in my opinion, a fantastic sound and it's the sound that I personally want. But what do what does he play the most? And uh, if this goes well, um, yeah, if it goes well, this could be the first of many guitars that you're going to uh, uh, build together. So the next one could have the trim. Uh, Jules says, thanks, Bun. If I get one, can you send it with my missing package? Um, Jules, I was under the impression that you had already had replacements for those packages and had been talking via email with people at headquarters. Uh, if that is not the case, then yeah, please let me know. But, uh, well, I've just taken a photograph, so I'll check that out on Wednesday when I'm in a, at, at headquarters. Uh, but it, I was under the impression that uh, your last package had already been dealt with months ago. Um, but we'll see. Uh, looking forward to, I'm looking forward to not having any of these issues that have happened over the last couple of years, I must tell you that. Space Oil Guitars. Uh, is it cheating to copy a setup? I have a friend whose guitars play like melted butterscotch. Uh, I'm hungry now. Uh, they have been set up by uh, folk music in Norway. I've copied everything I can measure. <laughs> It is absolutely not cheating. It is finding a better way of doing it and learning and, and making it happen. Half of the things I, most of the things I teach you are either things uh, I've read in a book or watched somebody do or heard in a video or seen. It's not cheating, it's, it's learning. And learning is always, always to be um, lauded and, yeah, it absolutely has to be 
something that just just do it don't overthink things uh loose and custom guitar says i may send a photo of it in the discord for next week's stream but i think i'll definitely try and fix the twist instead of set it off good luck uh, lisa says don't like shiraz yeah it's a i think it's even a cabernet shiraz it's not it's just not nice i don't know um it's fine <sighs> Cliff Evans says the battle for the Donbass has begun. Thoughts are with Ukraine. Um, the, the, the whole thing is, is just an absolute, absolute freaking nightmare. Uh, Paul Cook says imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. One of my favorite things is, um, is scrolling through Instagram or whatever and seeing a photograph of a guitar and going, that looks like something I made, but it's not by me. <laughs> And it's incredibly cool. It it really makes me happy. So yeah. Whew. Mr. Waffle says, "Dude, acoustic mockingbirds are kind of dope looking." Well, that's the thing. I didn't. I yeah. I'm gonna Google that now. I want one. Ah! Oh, that's cool. Okay. That's everybody as good as I thought it would be. All right, we've been going for just over two hours now. Seriously, if you have any questions, uh, hit me up because we're going to be calling it a night now. Lisa says, did you get my question about the facet drawings? I... Um, not tonight. I haven't seen one tonight. Uh, I'm assuming you're talking about... Uh, I assume you are talking about faceting the neck. Uh, what I want to actually do, and I've asked my staff, we are currently making neck templates. So for example, you can have a, I don't know, 59 Les Paul or whatever. And uh, on those templates, I want to laser in the, the rectangular design of how and where you need to facet it in order to get that shape. Uh, it's a, yeah, it's a, but in the end, all you need to do is once you know what that shape is, if you can draw that shape, you can work out on a, on a rectangle with a, a ruler, uh, where you need to facet. Uh, Jules, thank you for sending me that, uh, order number. I will check it out and, uh, we'll get back to you. Paul Needs says, so Ben, nicking the crimson headstock shape is okay. Uh, I have not got it uh, patented or trademarked or anything like that. Um, if you nicked my logo, I would have an issue. Um, and uh, yeah, but other than that, of course, go for it. It, it It's literally as uh, somebody said, uh, it's the, it's flattery. I'm, it's cool. Sirdar Carvin says, if you have to be 400 kilometers away from your bench for months, what would you do? I would build, um, I think it was Tamar at 3x3 Custom who built a small uh, travel bench. I would take a bench and some tools with me. Um, and if I couldn't do that, I would not do whatever it was that was taking me away from my bench for that long. I literally would go absolutely batshit insane. Period. Done. Finished. Okay. Everybody, look, I just want to say thank you very much for your support. We are, I'm calling it a night now. I'm knackered and I've got a live stream build tomorrow. 11 o'clock on this channel, Crimson Guitars Extras. I'm going to be, well, working on the, on the bass which I'm really looking forward to. So some uh, final sanding and finish, I don't think stain and hardware. I, I'm assuming that I'm actually gonna finish that instrument tomorrow. So uh, there we go. Um, <laughs> Sirdar Carbon says, all right, I'm quitting my job, lol. <laughs> Based on my last answer about not doing whatever it is that's taking me away from my bench. Make yourself a small bench, take some tools, and inlay. You can fit a set of inlay tools into a very small suitcase 
and you don't need you don't need a huge amount of uh, either sorry that was a bit loud either material or tools in order to practice your inlay and get really good and uh, there you go two or three months of practicing inlay every evening um, go for it it will not be time wasted uh, and that's just an example um, don't quit your job <laughs> Uh, Terry Love says, oh, good night here in the UK. Thanks for the stream, Ben. Thank you, Terry. I really appreciate your support. And uh, you guys are all amazing. Uh, you are. Here's more. Uh, Morgonia Evolution says, Tamar's tabletop bench is something I may actually put together at one point to enhance my Walmart folding table workspace. Go for it. Uh, good night, him, hers, and thems. Uh, that's from Bill. Uh, what about a red wine only Bill, that sounds awesome. Uh, now everybody's saying good night. Peace, love. Uh, oh no, that wasn't even so, uh, Space Oil Guitars saying peace. I thought it was, uh, <sighs> my gosh. That's it, we're done. I'm forgetting everybody's name now. Sweet tea, I thought it was sweet tea. Have fun. I'll catch you on the flip side. Good night.